Catherine Robertson is the president and founder of EagleCom Marketing. EagleCom specializes in designing marketing strategies for Christian organizations and nonprofits. She's taken her vast experience in advertising and media and applied it to charitable organizations so that they can maximize every donated dollar. She joins us today to talk about why this is so important to her. And thank you for joining us, Catherine. It is indeed my pleasure to be here. So you have a, a bit of a story to tell about how do you end up, obviously you, you come from the media world, mm -hmm. and uh, tell us about that transition from uh, working for other people to being in business for yourself. Well, I've actually had a 44 year career, can you believe it? in uh, advertising agency business. So you started always, when you were nine. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so I've always been that middleman, that group that's in between clients and the media and trying to get messages out. So 22 years ago, I married my love of ministry, media and marketing and created EagleCom. And the intention, I think, quite honestly, Randy, was that I would employ myself and work out of my living room and take care of my two children. And that would be my job. But in fact, it has grown from there. We're still a small company, but we're 12 people today and have uh, about 25 amazing clients that do great things all over the world. And we come alongside them now in, in many, many ways with their to help them reach people and convey messages that literally change people's lives. So you were you were like a corporate marketing guru and media buyer and et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, serving the corporate world. What's it like now serving the world of ministry and, and nonprofits? Well, I think it's fabulous. Uh, they have the same challenges and maybe even more so. Every one of our clients has to get the peace of mind that they're spending their donation dollar in the very best way. And that's where we come in, obviously. What I'm selling, Randy, is peace of mind. Our clients need to know that they have stretched those dollars, they've spent them wisely, and that they're reaching the right people in the most effective way. Now, you're... Little Eagle Calm that was going to be like a little solopreneur business at home, <laughs> something for you to do to cut back on all the boredom of raising, raising children. Ha ha. Um, <laughs> that became this really successful growing company. But there, there's, there's kind of a, a pause in the, in the success story. For 20 years, it was we added business, we added cl uh, clients, we added staff, and you know we were in that 10, 12 people range. Two years ago, I felt very, very called, drawn, inspired, uh, and, and encouraged to take some of the services that we'd been uh, employing out of house, if you will, like creative teams or marketing and branding teams, and bring them in house. It was a natural. I wasn't. Start, you know, I wasn't loading up on auto parts or something that didn't right. have anything to do with our business. Uh, we had a very natural extension. This was going to be a way to grow uh, in, a, in another form. And so we did that. And we hired talented people and we got all the com hardware and the software and the new office and all the things you need. Nothing was crazy, but you just start to do that. And then you walk down a road. And I walked down that road for two years. Everyone was busy. We were excited, you know, with lost leader projects, mind you, you know, right. where you're, you're giving away a lot because you're building this side of your business. So while we had been media planners and buyers, we now added you know, that full service, a creative team. I love being around creative people. They're awesome. And two years later, I realized we would be out of business in six months if I carried on with that. And right. I'll tell you, Randy, this, and this only happened uh, nine months ago. And at that time, I, I say I, I went into a valley. I sort of went into a very lonely place uh, I don't mean I was depressed or I didn't function, but I went to a lonely place of, I'm caught between a rock and a hard place. How do I get out of this valley? What do I do? And it was really difficult. And you know, the toughest part was if I felt like a failure. 
I felt Absolutely. like I felt like a failure. I thought, how could I be in business this long and do something that seemed so natural and fail at it? And failure was just that I financially could not possibly support this this path we were on. It was simple math. The costs outweighed the income, and I now carry debt that I might not pay off in my lifetime. But all of a sudden, you're going, how did I get here? Wow. And so, but then uh, I realized, uh, with the help of my brother and a few others who counseled me at the time, that trying something as an entrepreneur is never a failure. Lots of great ideas don't pan out. But had I not responded, that would have been failure. And so I had to cross that really difficult bridge and decide what it was going to take to change it. And that ultimately meant letting all of those services go and consequently letting people go. Tough. And July 6 was a really, really tough day. But you know, Randy, I've learned more through that experience than maybe the rest of my career. Because I realized that what matters to me is how I make people feel in business. And I had a job to do on July 6 to tell 10 people that I was taking away their job. Right. But what mattered was how I made them feel in that process. I was rocking their world that day. Wow. But it has been a huge learning curve for me. And we're coming back and we're strong. And we use some of those same people on a kind of a consulting contract freelance basis, contract yeah. basis. That's the way to say it. And that's great. And I'm delighted to do that. But I have talked to probably two dozen entrepreneurs in that period of time, and everyone has their story. So you're in a turnaround mode right now. It was an idea that did not pan out. I didn't have long enough. It would have worked eventually. But as a mentor friend said to me, when I said to him, you know, I feel like I've had, if I had long enough, it would have worked. He said, absolutely it would have, but you didn't have long enough. Right. And, <laughs> and so that was part of it. And, uh, well, in Silicon Valley, uh, they call it pivoting. <laughs> I <laughs> absolutely And all these big companies, and we've seen huge, huge companies. Can you imagine how some of these CEOs of some of these huge, mm. iconic, established companies, remember a company in Canada called Woodward's? <laughs> of course. And there's a long chain of them yeah. since that suddenly they're yeah. out of business. Well, yeah. I can't wait. This is, you're, you're going to be an inspiration to other people watching this show right now who are thinking, yikes, my business is in trouble and maybe I'm a failure. And instead, you just need to pivot. Ask Catherine Robertson. <laughs> just Thank a you. real delight to have you on Thank the show. You. Thank you. Thank so you so much, Catherine. Thank you.